I'm Owen Biglen. This is the Inside Edge video blog. Just flew back from uh, Detroit, Michigan. I was out there. I go out. It's been two years since I've been out to Detroit. I've got family out there. Uh, I don't want anybody knocking Detroit on my comment section here, okay? Listen, I've got family in Detroit. Detroit's a, I've got some Detroit blood in me. I, uh, uh, Detroit is a, is a cool old city. I think anyone that's visited there uh, will attest to that. It's a city that's had some hard times, but it's a city that I think has, has bottomed a few years ago and is slowly trying to, to, to make it back. It'll never be the city that it was in, uh, in, the, uh, in the peak of the auto business, that's for sure. But it's a cool old city, incredible architecture if you ever go there, the beautiful old buildings downtown. I always have a good time when I go there. Caught a University of Michigan football game at the big house, 110,000 people. Uh, people should put that on their bucket list for sure. Also caught a Detroit Lions game as well, which was fun. <laughs> Lions, of, they're the Detroit Lions. So, um, But there's an old saying uh, that has always been around Detroit because it's a blue collar working man city. And uh, there's an old saying in Detroit that some cities get by on their looks where other cities have to work for a living. And Detroit is one of those cities that doesn't get by on its looks. It's always blue, been blue collar, hard working, uh, beer drinking type of city. Uh, whereas of course Vancouver, Vancouver is a city uh, that can get by on its looks. And, uh, and has been for a long time. We, as people know, we don't have any major industry here in Vancouver. I don't even think we have a top 10 Canadian corporation based in Vancouver. Uh, I don't even think it's pretty slim pickings in the top 50. But uh, what we are starting to get a little bit more of is, is, a, is a bit more of a tech hub here, as is all of the West Coast from here down to San Diego. But for the most part, Vancouver gets by on its looks always has and will probably continue. And what I mean by that is Vancouver is an incredibly desirable city for people to, to live in. This is what people attain or, or what their goals are. Uh, I'll give you an example, someone who's living in Montreal or Toronto or Winnipeg, um, once they retire, if they've got a bit of money, uh, kids are grown up, they're out of the house, they sell the house, and if they can, they want to relocate to the West Coast here and retire, if they can afford it. Not everybody can, but those with the money, this is what they attain or wh what their goal is, is to eventually live in, in a city like Vancouver, buy a condo in Yale Town and live the West Coast lifestyle. The mild winters, the incredible summers, the seawall, the skiing, the Krause grind, the golf, uh, hop a quick flight down to Los Angeles in the winter time to escape or to Hawaii or whatever. So the reason I want to bring this up now, I blogged about this many times before and I talk about it in my book as well. So again, we're at a fever pitch here again with the pundits out there saying that Vancouver real estate is in for one of these huge market corrections that they've been calling for for 30 years. We're due for a, what I call the run-of-the-mill correction, which I've lived through many of them over the last 35 years, which tend to be 5 to 15%. Last one we had was in 2012, which was around 12, 15%. 2008 was about the same. Maybe we'll get one that's more severe here, 20 or 25. I don't know. We'll see what it brings. But it's hit a fever pitch, pitch again. People I'm seeing on blogs and some of these unpaid media liaisons, I call them, that are calling for a massive crash. Housing is way, way overpriced. And what they do, and I've been blogging about this for eight years, is they always point to the fundamentals. The fundamentals of the Vancouver market are out of whack. And yeah, I admit, of course, they're out of whack. They've been out of whack for 20 years in Vancouver. Fundamentals be meaning, what does the average guy earn in the lower mainland, let's call it $55,000. And what is it going to cost for him to buy a condo or a two bedroom or a detached house? And when you look at those numbers, what the average guy earns compared to our housing costs, it's ridiculous. It's going to take a guy 25 years just to save for the down payment, the typical guy, to buy a one and den condo in Yale Town. But what I've been trying to pound home to people here for so many years, and I'm going to give another plug 
to Bob Rennie, who I've mentioned on this many times before, who was the guy that really was, was bringing this up 13 years ago, was that Vancouver has never worked off fundamentals, just like many world cities don't work off fundamentals. We're not alone here. People seem to think that Vancouver is an anomaly. We're the only ones with these housing prices compared to local wages, and we're not. Look into it. But Vancouver, for the last 15 or 20 years, has been an equity-driven market. This is people that have bought condos, detached homes, townhomes, 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago, and have ridden the market up. Or it's their parents, they bought a detached home 30 years ago and of course are helping their kids get in the market with a $100,000 down payment each. The other thing of course is getting by on its looks. Vancouver is a city that people want to live in. If they've got money, if they've got some assets and any type of wealth, these are the cities they want to live in. They want to live in Vancouver. They want to live in Southern California. They want to live in San Diego, New York City, Miami, London. And that is never going to change. And that is only going to get stronger as Vancouver grows and gets more attractive to these people. Listen, you don't hear of too many people. Let's say they're living in Montreal and are getting tired of the winters. They're 65 years old and they've got a couple million dollars in the bank. They've retired from Bell Canada. You don't think, I don't see too many of them dreaming about selling the place in Montreal and moving to Edmonton or Saskatoon or Regina. <laughs> That's not where they want to go. If they've got a net worth of two or three million dollars, they're going to come out here to Vancouver. How do I know? Well, I know because I'm selling homes to these people all the time. They're coming out here from other parts of Canada. Some of them are coming up here from the States and buying, still buying second homes or going up to Whistler and buying a place up there. Speculation tax isn't going to curb much of that. But if they're Canadian, I see it all the time from back east. This is where they want to live and that's not going to stop. So you can't base the Vancouver market off fundamentals. And I'm surprised that people still haven't caught on to this yet. Some of these bloggers that are calling for 50-60% correction based off fundamentals. If you look at the fundamentals, you're absolutely right. It doesn't make sense. How can this market be sustainable when the average guy earns 55 k and it's going to cost you $700,000 to buy a 550 square foot Yale Town condo that's 10 years old? The numbers don't add up, but yet this market continues to roll. And it has for many, many years now. Let me tell, give you one more scenario here. Think about it. I've blogged about this before too. If this rise in Vancouver real estate prices over the last 20 years, if that hasn't been a result of fundamentals, because it hasn't, the market hasn't, the condo in, in, in uh, Yale Town you could have bought for 300K 12 years ago that's now worth seven. That hasn't increased because of fundamentals, people's salaries going up. So why would any correction that we eventually get be based off fundamentals? Maybe someone can tell me that. Now listen, we're going to get corrections. They're, do, they're, they're as normal as rain in the wintertime. We should get one every three or four years. We're overdue for what? Maybe it'll be 20%, 30%, maybe it'll be kind of our standard 5 to 10%, which is the kind of the ones we tend to get every three or four years. Market just kind of runs out of steam. Maybe a few more interest rate hikes here. I call it buyer fatigue. We kind of reset for a few years and then off she goes again. But the Vancouver market unhinged from fundamentals over 20 years ago. And it's not gonna ever go back to fundamentals. It's not, you have to realize that. You know, I talked about this before. Bob Rennie, the condo king. You know, Bob Rennie, I know a lot of people do not criticize Bob Rennie, but you can't deny this guy is a smart guy, very successful guy. If anybody knows how Vancouver real estate works, especially the condo market and has insight into it, it's Bob Rennie. Nobody comes close. He's privy to all the pre-sales, 
what kind of offers you're getting, how the product is selling. He's also got his own brokerage with another 40 or 50 realtors working for him. I blogged about this and I talked about this a little bit in my book where 12 or 13 years ago, I attended, I think it was a, board, a, a Vancouver Board of Trade luncheon. It's been a long time. Bob Rennie was the speaker there. And at that time, Vancouver condo prices, people were complaining about them at that time. This is 13 years ago. This is when you could buy a one bedroom, 600 square feet in Yale Town for 320, 330 with parking. And people were up in arms. $330,000 for a one bedroom condo, you're nuts. The fundamentals don't add up. The typical guy's making 30K, how can he afford a $325,000 one bedroom condo plus the property transfer tax and the maintenance fees? It's out of whack and this market is in a bubble. Bob Rennie at this luncheon, and I've talked about this before, was one of the first guys that started saying that, listen, Vancouver condo market, the Vancouver real estate market in general does not work off fundamentals. It is unhinged from that. The city has been discovered. This is a city that gets by on its looks and it's an equity driven market. People that have bought, held and ridden it up, tapped into equity and bought more real estate. That's what happens when you get a bull run for 30 years like you have here. He was the first guy to start talking about an equity driven market. But of course, man, he took a lot of heat. People saying he's a typical condo marketer. This market is going to crash. You should sell that $300,000 Yale Town condo and buy in because the real value on it's more like 150. Crazy. Bob Rennie hit the nail on the head. He was the first one telling people that Vancouver is a desirable city. People from around the world are going to want to come here. That was like 13 or 14 years ago. Look where we've gone here. The guy was absolutely 100% accurate. As a matter of fact, he underestimated how accurate he was and where these prices have gone. So we're going to get corrections. They happen. But stop looking at Vancouver real estate based off fundamentals. If you want a market, if you want to buy into a market that's based off fundamentals, you're going to have to go to places like Boise, Idaho, Wichita, Kansas, maybe rural Manitoba. I, I think actually even places like Regina and Edmonton are actually well above what the market fundamentals are, what the uh, fundamentals are there for the typical wage earner. But you're going to have to go to some backwater Midwest cities where you know you can buy a detached home for 185 grand. The problem is you don't get any appreciation on these homes. You know, back to my Detroit story, there's another city. If you want a market that's based off fundamentals, you can buy for 130k, you can buy a pretty decent house in the suburbs of Detroit. For 400,000, you can buy yourself a small mansion in a fairly nice suburb of Detroit. The problem is you pay 400k for it today, in 10 years from now you're going to sell it for 410. <laughs> There's no appreciation on it. So, the bottom line here. And this is probably the fourth blog I've done on fundamentals and I still see these pundits pointing to the fundamentals. They just don't get it. I guess a lot of them, I think what's happened is a lot of them have never been outside the cocoon of Vancouver. I think that's the problem. Now I'm fortunate enough that I've traveled extensively, pretty much all over the world, all through Europe, South America. I take five or four or five trips a year. So I know what other cities are like. There's some incredible cities that I'd love to visit and spend time there, but very few cities I'd want to live in full time. And whether you think this or not, Vancouver is one of the best cities in the world to live in, bar none. Don't take my word for it. It's at the top of the list for, in many publications in the top 10 for the last decade. Now, I know some people think it rains too much here, too expensive. Real estate is being controlled by money launderers and everything else. Well, if that's you and you want to continue complaining, I would just leave, leave Vancouver, go to a place that's more affordable. But of course, there'll be 10 people to take your place here. I still laugh about people saying the city's hollowing out and it's not what it was. Well, 
listen, I feel for you. It's not what it was if you haven't been keeping up with the market and you're struggling. But what's happening here is people are coming from all over Canada, they're coming from all over the world, and they're coming to Vancouver, they wanna live here permanently full time or maybe even have a second or third home here. And that's not gonna stop. And that's why Vancouver, you cannot look at our prices here based off fundamentals and what the local guy earns. It's been unhinged from that for 20 years. Bob Rennie was warning you guys on this. So keep that in mind. We will get a correction. <laughs> look at any market corrections we get as buying opportunities. I will be. If we get a 5, 10, 15% correction over the next year and a half or two years, I buy pretty much every couple years anyways, regardless of what the market does. I just buy and hold. But I would look at any, any market corrections we do get as short-lived and look at them as buying windows. Just like Apple stock. If you've been owning Apple stock like me for eight or nine years, I look at any slight pullbacks as good buying windows and just keep accumulating it. I'm on big line. I appreciate everyone's comments on this. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing to my YouTube uh, channel. I'll see you next week.